Hello! Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about the short story Aliens by Richard Van Camp uh, from the anthology Love Beyond Body, Space, and Time. And as usual, we're going to start off with a passage directly from the story. Um, and this is actually from the opening of the story itself, so let's hop into it. I want to tell you a beautiful story, and I've been waiting for somebody very special to tell it to. I guess it's no secret now. The aliens or sky people are here. We can see a ship way up high. It's outlined, no lights. It's like a big dark stone in the sky, and most people just watch TV or Facebook now waiting for something to happen. Some people call them obelisks. Apparently there's one huge ship miles over every continent, and oceans are boiling. Gently. But no fish are dying. Just simmering, and scientists say the oceans and rivers are being cleansed. It's like the star people, that's what our elders call them, are helping us. Church bells all over the world chime every hour on the hour, but I'm not sure why. Now, that second paragraph that I'm pulling from there, I just pulled out one sentence rather than the full thing, because I want to kind of return back to that later. So let's move on to a summary. What is this story about? Um, as always, I encourage you to go out and read the story, um, you know, before or after the video, however you want to go about it. But let's run through a quick story, just kind of or quick summary, just to refresh our memory. Um, and there's one or two words in here that I looked up the pronunciation for, um, but I really couldn't find a whole lot of good pronunciation or uh, some of the words I don't feel like I'm going to be able to pronounce um, as well as I'd like to. So um, just work with me on that. Um, but let's go ahead and hop into the summary. In Richard Van Camp's Aliens from the anthology Love Beyond Body, Space, and Time, an unnamed narrator recounts a love story, partially heard and partially dreamt. Aliens, the star people, have appeared above Earth, it's true, but life in the story's Tleco community carries on. People are still working, going off to college, finding love, raising children, and coming back to see the elementary Christmas concert. However, one person, quiet and gentle, has never really left the town. Our narrator refers to this person as Jimmy, and informs us that Jimmy is relayed to them in the medicine way. Her grandfather healed Jimmy's father a long time ago, and a blood relative of our narrator is their niece, Chandra. And so one day, we're told by the narrator while Chandra is picking up light bulbs from Jimmy's hardware store that Jimmy asked Chandra on a date, and some cute, awkward conversation passes between them. After all, Jimmy's normally so quiet and Chandra's inexperienced with dating, before Chandra agrees to meet him out for dinner. Later that evening, they have a wonderful first date, and although they grew up in the community together, Chandra never really knew much about Jimmy. After, Chandra and Jimmy drive back to Jimmy's home above his hardware store, and they share an intimate night together. The morning after, Chandra calls around town, clearly in love, recounting the story to her relatives and our narrator, only able to describe Jimmy as beautiful and that there are no words for what he is. At this point, the story shifts from heard to dreamt, which is an important distinction when we're talking about the story. Our narrator says in her mind, Jimmy is neither man or woman, but both, and that she had a dream of Jimmy and Chandra lying in bed, holding each other, talking. She tells us that she thinks a lot about Jimmy and Chandra, about the difficulties faced by people who are two-spirit, transgender, or perhaps something never heard of before under these skies. She tells us that she wants laughter for them, children for them, if that's what they want too, and to see them standing together with the rest of the community at next Christmas concert, even the star people too, above them, helping them all. And so let's hop into kind of the notes. That's my quick rundown of the story. Um, but it's important to remember also, this story is told in a complex way. Um, you know, you're hopping between um, both told accounts and kind of dreamed moments and stuff like that. So if you had a little bit of difficulty with that summary, that's okay. Uh, so let's hop into the notes, as I said. Um, so on one level, this story is just a simple love story. Um, but it brings two unique elements that I think are really neat. Um, the first is its inversion of tropes, right? Unlike classic science fiction, the aliens are not invaders. I'm sure you've seen that many, many times, you know, where they come down in big ships, they destroy stuff, or if not that, they're here for resources or something else, or it's usually hostile, right? Instead, they're quiet, helpful, and pretty much unseen. Jimmy, too, flips an archetype on its head. Jimmy is the unknown outsider, which is a trope in science fiction, but like the aliens, he does not bring harm. Both are opportunities to understand what is perceived as other and to embrace the other into the community. The second big thing, which we already kind of talked about briefly, um, is how the story is told, right? The story is recounted by a third party. Names are changed, details are passed around like a game of telephone, and a portion of it's even dreamt. In a way, it's the community telling the story of Jimmy and Chandra in this tale. 
If a love story is about bringing two people together, this story is not only a love story between Jimmy and Chandra, but a love story between the outsider and the community, a story about the radiant possibility of, quote, what could be. So our big question for the story to kind of round it off is, why did the author choose to let our narrator imagine that Jimmy was neither man nor woman, but both? Why not simply state what Jimmy is? How does this ambiguity fit with the theme of the story? And as always, cite the text and any other sources to support your answers. Thanks for watching.